Hey, what's going on, y'all? My name's Dakota. Thanks for watching Tennessee Ray. Today, we're out here at the Southern Precision Tooling Range again. This time, we're checking out the Walther PDPF. Uh, this one specifically is the three and a half inch model. They also have a four inch model. Uh, as some of you guys may know, if you're watching this video, the Walther PDP is a uh, polymer frame striker fired pistol, so similar to a Glock or like a Sig P320, but it has excellent ergonomics and it also comes optics ready from the factory. Let's go ahead and check this thing out and get into it. All right, y'all, we're back from the range, checking out the Walther PDPF. Uh, again, this is the 3.5 inch model, so this is the shorter barrel. They also have a four inch model. While we're talking about the barrel, let's go ahead and start there and work our way back. So the three and a half inch barrel makes for a shoot, super short, snubby slide. Uh, it still has some forward serrations on it though. Good forward serrations you can get a hold of super easily. Uh, it still has good iron sights. Well, I say good iron sights, they're white dot iron sights. They're probably not the best. If you're uh, wanting to use this gun for defensive purposes, which is what it's designed for, maybe you should want some night sights on it. Or if you're running it with an optic, then maybe you just want some blacked out sights, right? Uh, anyways, it has iron sights on it. Every gun has iron sights on it. Let's keep moving back from there. This gun has the uh, Walther optic cut as well, the PDP optic cut. So this one specifically has an 1171 Designs optic plate. Uh, these are made out of titanium. They're super solid optic plates. I recommend you guys go check them out. And it's topped off with the Holosun EPS. The EPS is a, a great optic. I have an EPS carry on my 365. We'll talk about that later here in a minute. Still have serrations as we come back here to the rear of the slide as well. The rear sight is adjustable. Awesome. Great features. Uh, moving down from there, the controls on this gun. Everything is exactly this gun is cleared out it is safe and i'm pointing it in a safe direction right um, everything on this gun control wise is exactly where i want it the slide release is right there where my thumb is the mag release is right there whenever i put my thumb down it's exactly where i want it to be i can get the meat of my hands on this gun and get a solid grip this gun specifically does not have the factory trigger uh, it has the overwatch precision trigger I'm a big fan of Overwatch Precision as well. Overwatch Precision makes great triggers. They're based out of Arizona. Uh, those guys are great. If you're looking for aftermarket triggers, go hit these guys up. I know the PDPF has a different trigger than the standard PDP, which I mentioned in my video about the steel frame. I don't like it when companies have a line, the PDP line, for example, and they make a modification to something internally in the line. So with the with the steel frame gun, it's the magazines and the magwell. With this gun, it's the trigger. So a regular PDP trigger will not fit in this gun. The internal geometry is different. Uh, it doesn't work, right? So Overwatch Precision is one of very few companies that I think is actually making an aftermarket trigger for this gun. Probably doesn't need an aftermarket trigger from the factory, but it's an awesome trigger. It upgrades just a little bit. It's nice. It's a nice flat trigger. It's made of metal. It's a good trigger. Moving down from there, the grip texture on these PDPs, man. The grip texture on these PDPs is amazing. Uh, it, it's a little sharp if you really grip into it, but it's really not that sharp. It'll leave, uh, it'll leave the texture on your hand if you're gripping the gun right. But you want that. You want the gun to bite you back a little bit. That way you know it's not going to move in your hands. So I'm a big fan of this texture. Uh, it kind of looks like snake skin. It kind of doesn't. Uh, I don't really know what they call it. You also have checkering on the front here. Uh, man, Walter knocked it out of the park with the PDP lineup and the PDPF lineup specifically with the grip texture, the grip texture placement, the grip texture styles. Uh, they, they knocked it out of the park. I'll just leave it at that. This gun takes 15 round magazines. Uh, these these magazines are flush fit, similar to like a Glock 19, uh, Sig P320 Compact, uh, HK VP9, I 
think is a 15 round magazine or the originals were 15s i think they take 17s now uh it's that same size it's a compact gun it's just got a three and a half inch barrel instead of a four inch barrel that being said let's talk about this gun versus what i carry um, i don't like doing comparisons i've never been a big comparison guy on this channel but i had my carry gun with me at the range i had this gun with a similar design we don't, it's not the same holster company but it's a similarly designed holster it's an appendix rig carries it in the front with a magazine beside it um, i ran some drills with this gun side by side with the gun that i carry every day so let's run those drills real quick let's show them on camera i'm going to show some slow motion footage side by side of these two guns with the recoil comparison you guys be the judge in the comments and let me know what you think at the end of this video i'm going to tell you what i think anyways let's go ahead and do that Three, four, eight, three, four, eight. Three, three, four. Two, seven, seven, two, seven, seven. God, that first shot, it always jumps in my hand after that first shot too. Two, nine, nine. Five three zero. Five one nine. Missed one. Missed one at a seven oh six. I got two malfunctions. 1070. Okay, so I have come to the conclusion that I'm going to be finding myself a compact gun to carry uh, every day. So side by side, I had this gun in the holster, uh, put it in my waistband, had my 365X in the holster, put it in my waistband, Side by side, there is basically no difference in concealability with the clothes that I had on. Uh, I also removed my sweater. I didn't film any of that stuff, but I removed my sweater and just had a long sleeve shirt on and compared side by side. And concealability was basically identical. I'm a weirdly shaped person. I'm kind of skinny, but I'm kind of wide. I don't conceal guns very easily. Um, this gun conceals just as easily as my 365 does. My 365X, I should say, does. Uh, unless I got rid of the appendix rig and just had a, a holster, a deep concealment holster that's designed for hiding the gun completely away. What I think I prefer about this gun specifically and probably compact guns in general is when I reach to grab this gun out of the holster, my hand is automatically guided to a full grip I don't have to search and make sure I have my hand placed correctly behind the gun before I draw it out of the holster. My 365X is a little thinner, right? It's uh, almost a quarter inch thinner, I think, if I remember the numbers right. So when I grab my 365X out of the holster, I have to make sure that my hand is lined up perfectly straight on the back strap of the gun, or else I'm going to start throwing shots left and right about the second shot. Um, and that was seen in the footage comparing these guns side by side. 
my accuracy with a compact gun, this gun specifically, the PDPF, was significantly, drastically higher, better than with the 365X. You're talking a three inch gun versus a three and a half inch gun. You're talking 12 rounds versus 15 rounds. Uh, you're talking the ability to run a full size optic versus having to run a subcompact optic or a compact, a small pistol optic, whatever you want to call it, right? I will be buying a compact gun to full time carry. I will keep my 365 to carry for deep concealment, like I mentioned already, but from here on, I will probably be carrying a compact gun that holds 15 rounds. Uh, leaning heavily towards this gun or the Smith & Wesson Compact 2.0, uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think between those two guns. Maybe I should do a review of the Compact 2.0 and compare it side by side with the PDPF. Anyways. I'm a big fan. Uh, Walter, you guys knocked it out of the park again. Uh, this is a great gun. If you're looking at one, hit the buy now button. Uh, don't wait any longer. If you want to upgrade, if you want to add some things here and there, definitely put an optic on it. Uh, I mean, it's 2024. We're all shooting optics on our pistols unless competition rules say we can't, right? So anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you hit the links down in the description below. Uh, thanks to my buddy Matt for letting me borrow this gun. He also let me borrow the steel frame. I think I forgot to give him a shout out in that video. Uh, big thanks to you, Matt, for letting me borrow these. You guys are awesome. Hit the like button if you like this video. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of my future content. And make yourself better today. God bless, and we'll see you.